Chairete mathetai teis kaleis glosais teis helenikeis. Welcome, that is, students of the beautiful Greek language. Pros megalen karen emein est in humas kain thad katharan kadidaskein tautein ambrosion glosan. It's my great pleasure to see you here and to teach this immortal tongue. Milonikosemi. I am Milonikos, which is the ancient Greek word for miller, which is what my surname Mueller means in the original German. I am honored to serve as your didaskalos, your teacher, and have you as my students, my mathetai. And if you think that mathetai sounds like math, you are quick studies indeed. Our word math derives from the Greek verb manthano, I learn. And we have a lot to accomplish today, mathetai. The Greek alphabet and what we call the restored classical pronunciation of ancient Greek. Doubters and skeptics, and I can see you out there, may wonder how we could possibly know how Homer may have pronounced the letters almost 3,000 years ago, or perhaps Plato, a half a millennium later in Athens, or after another 500 years when the Apostle Paul penned his letters. Oh, ye of little faith. You're right, of course. So much time, so many territories, so many authors and works. Homer's Iliad and Odyssey, Sappho's love poetry, Pindar's victory odes, Greek tragedy and comedy, Herodotus, the father of history, some say lies, Plato, Aristotle, lyric poetry, the gospel writers, the apostle Paul, Plutarch's lives of the famous Grecians and Romans. And we are just getting started. Did they all pronounce Greek the same way? Do we all pronounce English the same way? In Australia, the UK, Scotland, Ireland, Canada, India, Africa, or even the USA? Languages are messy, especially over time and across many places. Nevertheless, we shall today learn one pronunciation that will apply to all the Greek we read. We call it the restored classical pronunciation. This pronunciation differs significantly from modern Greek, which, after the downfall of Constantinople in 1453 and the revival of classical learning in Europe, was the original model. But then a scholar by the name of Erasmus set off a firestorm among scholars by arguing, in Latin, for what we call the restored classical pronunciation. This pronunciation remains the standard in American colleges and universities, and we will use restored classical pronunciation in this course. Although we will, truth be told, make some concessions to the sounds of American English. And if you speak another variety of English or another language altogether, please embrace whatever adjustments work for you. Language should be an instructive pleasure, not a torture. The important thing is to pronounce Greek loudly, confidently, relatively accurately, and consistently. This will allow us to enjoy Greek as a language. We can focus more on reading than on speaking ancient Greek, but we certainly aim to pronounce words and sentences aloud in a way that is recognizable as the restored classical pronunciation, even if our pronunciation might have marked us as tourists to ancient speakers of Homeric or Attic or Doric or Ialic or Ionic or modern Greek. And the grammar that we learn in this class will serve as a solid foundation for reading Greek from Homer in the 800s BCE to classical Attic in the 5th century BCE, to the common literary dialect or koine dialectos that became standard after the conquests of Alexander the Great. The New Testament would eventually be written in this dialect, which we simply call koine. There are other dialects too, but we will keep our eye on what is most common and useful. We take Homeric Greek as our starting point, and we will aim to learn these forms thoroughly. Knowing the older forms helps explain why later forms look the way they do. Later Greek tends to contract older forms. We do the same thing. Compare, I'm going to go now, which becomes, I'm gonna go now, 
or even, I'm a go now. Contraction happens to many languages. We will thus look from time to time at how Homeric forms eventually settled on Koine forms. By pausing regularly to look at the New Testament, we will become acquainted with contracted forms, and between the earlier and later forms, we will acquire the key to most literary Greek over a span of thousands of years. For all its varieties, Greek displays remarkable continuity, and words that Homer used can still be heard on the streets of Athens today. One small example. The word ton in Homer can mean him. In modern Greek, ton can mean him. And these two are even still pronounced the same way. But leaving modern Greek aside, ancient Greek alone unlocks riches that can only be appreciated by those who know some Greek. Shakespeare famously had small Latin and less Greek, but he had some. And after this course, you will have mastered the Greek verb and have read lines of Homer's Iliad, as well as passages from the New Testament in the original Greek, an accomplishment that no one will ever be able to take from you. But first, the alphabet. We, of course, use the Latin alphabet, which is a descendant of a West Greek alphabet. That is why so many Latin letters look like their Greek counterparts. The Greek alphabet was itself developed from a Semitic alphabet. The first two letters in Greek are alpha and beta, hence our alpha beta, or alphabet. But compare the Hebrew letters Aleph and Beth, and you can hear the close kinship. Globalism and cultural exchange are hardly exclusively modern phenomena. The classical Greek alphabet has 24 letters. We will leave aside for now two archaic letters, although you can find them in the guidebook if you're curious. Our first letter is alpha, which, especially as a capital, looks just like our own letter A. It is always pronounced, when long, like the A in father, or when short, more like a. Uh. It is never, ever pronounced like the A in cake or the A in cat. Please repeat, alpha, a. Uh. Our next letter is beta. Again, not a problem. We will pronounce it like our own B. Please repeat, beta, b. By the way, are you repeating proud and out loud? This is important. It is crucial to engage teeth, tongues, lips, the whole neuropsychological apparatus of language from brain to mouth to ears to hands to eyes. The more synapses you light up in learning a language, the better it sticks. Please repeat out loud. We begin with letters, but we'll soon move on to words, phrases, and whole sentences. Your own breath across vocal cords, tongue, and teeth, and lips has the power to bring ancient Greek to life. Use your power wisely and repeat proud and out loud. Letter number three, gamma. Gamma is equivalent to G. The uppercase looks like a gallows, the lowercase a bit more familiar. Gamma is always pronounced hard, g, as in girl, never j, as in gymnasium. Please repeat, gamma, g. Delta. Delta is equivalent to d, as in deal. Please repeat, delta, d. Epsilon. Epsilon is equivalent to a short E, as in pet. Please repeat, epsilon, eh. Zeta. Zeta is equivalent to Z, but zeta buzzes more in Greek because we should insert a D sound as well. Technically, ZD, as in Mazda, but it's a lot easier to say DZ, dz, which is what I generally do. What can I say? I've got a bit of an American accent. Please repeat. Zeta, dz. Eta. Eta is equivalent to the long A in gate. Because this letter looks like an H, 
and a capital, as a capital, and an N in the lowercase, it will take some study. Please repeat. Eta. A. Theta. Theta is equivalent to TH. Some choose to pronounce theta as an aspirated T. But our T's in English are already aspirated. If I say, for example, the name Tommy, I put a puff of air after the T. If I take away that puff of air, I would say Tommy. Aspirated, Tommy. Unaspirated, Tommy. But I find that difficult and do not want to pronounce an unaspirated T for tau, the Greek T. So a TH sound, th, for theta, is normal and common. Please repeat. Theta, th. Iota. Iota is pronounced either as a long E, as in feet, and police, or a short I, as in hit. Please repeat. Iota, E, or I. Kappa. Kappa is equivalent to K and pronounced like the K in kill. Please repeat. Kappa, K. Lambda. Lambda is equivalent to L and pronounced like the L in language. Please repeat. Lambda, U. Mu. Mu is equivalent to M and pronounced like the M in man. Please repeat. Mu. M. Nu. Nu is equivalent to N and pronounced like the N in never. It looks a bit like our V, so it requires some study. Please repeat. Nu. N. Xi. Some call it Xi, but I prefer Xi. Xi is a double consonant equivalent to X. That is a K and S sound, and pronounced like the X in box. Please repeat. Xi. X. Omicron is a small O, a micro O, which is to say a short O like the O as in ought, but a shorter. A closed O, as in the British pronunciation of pot. Never, as in my own native Midwestern American, bat. Please repeat. Omicron, o. Oh. Pi. Pi is equivalent to the P in pi. Please repeat. Pi, pa. Rho. Rho looks like a P, but it's not. Rho is an R. If you can trill it the way they do in the Mediterranean, please do. I, on the other hand, a son of Wisconsin, will proceed with a good old American er. Please repeat. Rho. R. By the way, if you think this is going too fast, it probably is. So please remember that you can repeat this lecture as many times as you like. Also, you will find all of these sounds spelled out in the guidebook, so you can study individual letters at your leisure, with me or without me, as you prefer. Sigma. Sigma is equivalent to S and pronounced as the S in sing. Note, however, that there are three sigmas, uppercase sigma and two lowercase sigmas. One lowercase sigma looks like an O with a pigtail, and one is squiggly like our S. Round pigtail sigma is used everywhere except the end of a word. Squiggly S sigma appears exclusively at the end of words. Please repeat. Sigma, S. Tau is equivalent to our T and pronounced as the T in tip. Please repeat. Tau, T. Upsilon. This letter represents a sound that we don't have in English. Upsilon should ideally be pronounced as the U in French, tu, or as in the German word for Miller, Müller. On the other hand, the U in English, prune, may serve as a close approximation. 
Please repeat. Upsilon u. Phi is an aspirated p. But again, we aspirate p's in English. So if we were to pronounce phi as if it were an aspirated p, we'd have to take the aspiration off pi and pronounce it phi. Life is too short. Most students of ancient Greek pronounce the phi like the f sound at the beginning of philosophy. Please repeat. Phi, pha. Chi. Chi is another sound that we do not have in English. It's equivalent to a soft K. One makes a K sound, but lets the air seep through the back of the throat as one pronounces it. K, K, the air escapes. It's equivalent to the CH in Scottish, loch, or German, doch. If you can't make this sound, no worries. A simple K sound will suffice. Remember, no ancient Greek will ever make fun of your accent, and neither will we. Please repeat, chi, psi. Psi is another double consonant, equivalent to PS. Psi is pronounced like the PS at the end of lips. Please repeat, psi, ps. And finally, omega. Omega is big O, mega O, as opposed to micro O or Omicron. Mega O is long like the O in open. Please repeat, Omega O. The first letter is alpha, the last letter is omega. If you go from alpha to omega, you go from beginning to end. Let's recite the alphabet. When I pause, please repeat. Alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon. Zeta, eta, theta. Iota, kappa. Lambda, mu, nu. Xi, omicron, pi. Rho, sigma, tau, upsilon, phi, chi, psi, omega. And one more time. But this time, we will practice the sound of each letter. Please repeat. Alpha, ah. Beta, ba. Gamma, g. Delta, da. Epsilon, e. Eh. Zeta, z. Eta, a. Theta, th. Iota, e or i. Kappa, k. Lambda, ul. Mu, m. Nu, n. Xi, x. Omicron, o. Pi, pa. Rho, r. Sigma, s. Tau, t. Upsilon, u. Phi, f. Chi, ch, psi, ps, omega, o. There are a few other sounds to learn, namely some vowel combinations called diphthongs, but let's practice a few Greek words first that don't contain diphthongs. Our first word means countless and is the origin of our word myriad. Let's spell it. Mu, upsilon, rho, iota, omicron, sigma. Did you notice what kind of sigma? Squiggly sigma 
at the end. And what looks like a lowercase p is really a row, an r. Let's read it aloud. Merios. And again, Merios. By the way, the mark over the iota is an accent. Please repeat. Merios. Each consonant is pronounced with the vowel that follows it as a separate syllable. Let's read it again. M -ri -os. This word means sea, as in a large body of salt water, but not an ocean. Let's spell it. Theta, alpha, lambda, alpha, Sigma, Sigma, Alpha. Did you note the pigtailed sigmas in the middle of the word? Let's try reading it. Thalasa. Again, Tha, Las, Sa. And one more time, Thalasa. Here's a verb that means to put or to place. Shall we spell it? Tau, iota, theta, eta, mu, iota. Let's read it slowly. T, the, me. And faster. T, the, me. Again, three vowels, three syllables. Did you say E for the iotas? One more time. Tife me. And lest you think every word has three syllables, here's a word for and or but. Delta epsilon. Please give it a try. De. Again, de. The epsilon is short. Please try to read the Greek word for hero. Let's spell it. Eta, rho, omega, sigma. But what are those marks above the eta? We call them diacriticals, but that does not tell us what they are. One diacritical looks like a quotation mark. And one diacritical looks like an accent. The accent is an accent. But what is the curved mark? The one that looks like a quotation mark is a breathing mark. There are two kinds of breathing marks. And all words that begin with vowels have a breathing mark over the first letter. Breathing marks indicate whether the letter is to be pronounced with an H. We call this rough breathing. Or without an H which we call smooth breathing. Let's compare and contrast. The first eta has a mark that opens to the right. The second eta, one that opens to the left. The first eta should be pronounced with an H. The second eta should be pronounced without an H. Let's read the first. Hey. Please repeat. Hey. Now let's read the second. A. Please repeat. A. Time for a quiz. Try to pronounce the Adas correctly with or without an H. After a brief pause, I'll provide the answer. Are you ready? Hey. A. Hey. A. Hey. I think that we're ready to try hero in Greek. Please repeat. Hey, Ros. And faster. Hey, Ros. Time runs apace. Let's look at what remains of ancient Greek pronunciation. Diphthongs, that is, two vowels sounded as one at the same time. 
There are nine diphthongs, but only seven sounds. Alpha iota is pronounced like the A-I in aisle. Please repeat, alpha iota, I. Alpha upsilon is pronounced like the O-U in house. Please repeat, alpha upsilon, ow. Epsilon iota is pronounced like the A in freight, that is, pretty much like the eta, but we do not have a pure A sound in English, so most of us can't hear the difference. Please repeat, epsilon iota, A. Epsilon upsilon, or eta upsilon, is a two-for-one special. A long epsilon is represented as an eta, so when combined with an upsilon, they both make the same sound, which unfortunately does not exist in English. It's like the EU in French, fleur, or the O umlaut in German, schön. Equivalent to E plus U fused into one syllable. E U, E U, U. But if you'd like to settle for U, that works too. We're not native speakers, we have an accent. Please repeat Epsilon, Epsilon, or Eta, Epsilon, U. Omicron iota is pronounced like the O-I in foil. Please repeat, Omicron iota, oi. Omicron Upsilon and Omega Upsilon is another two-for-one special. Little O and big O combined with Upsilon is pronounced like the O-U in soup. Please repeat, Omicron Upsilon or Omega Upsilon, oo. And finally, Upsilon Iota is pronounced like the English word we oui, or the French we. Oui. Please repeat, Upsilon Iota, we. Oui. Have you got all that? Of course not, unless you already know Greek, which brings me to an important point. You're going to have homework, Mathetai. You'll find summaries of the lecture and supplementary exercises. In the guidebook, it is essential that you complete the exercises for each lecture before proceeding to the next lecture. Practice makes perfect, and you are free to repeat each lecture too, as often as you like. Let's repeat a few more words. Please repeat after me and concentrate on each letter or combination of letters as we say the word. Please repeat. Achilus. Again, Achilus. Was that a smooth or rough breathing before the alpha? Smooth. The last syllable is a diphthong. Ö. One more time. Achilus. Very good. Ulominos. Smooth or rough breathing. Smooth. The first syllable is a diphthong. Any diacriticals go over the second vowel of the diphthongs. Please repeat. U, la, me, nos. Again. U, la, me, nos. One more time. U, la, me, nos. Smooth breathing. Second syllable is a diphthong. Accent is on the last syllable. Please repeat. A, chai, os. Again, a, chai, os. Algos. Again, algos. Polos. Again, polos. Ifthimos. More slowly. If the moss. Again, if the moss. Psuche. Again, psu che. Psuche. Pro e opto. Do you see the two dots over the iota? That's not an umlaut. We call it a diaresis. And this is our final diacritical. 
It means that the iota is pronounced separately from the preceding omicron rather than as the diphthong oi. Please repeat. Pro e up to. Four syllables. Again. Pro e up to. And faster. Pro e up to. Hellorian. He, lo, re, un. Elorion. Tuco. Again. Tuco. Oi, o, nos. Three syllables. Oi, o, nos. Again, oionos. And finally, logos. Please repeat, logos. Logos means word, which was, according to John, at the beginning. But for us, it is at the end. My water clock has run out. Please study the alphabet in the guidebook, memorize the alphabet, do the practice exercises, repeat the first lecture as many times as you like. And when you feel comfortable, visit me again in lecture two. But for now, I must go. And may you, Mathetai, come back soon. Farewell, students. Chairete, Mathetai.